Hi, I'm Jody Daly, and this is Let's Talk, where consumers like all of us talk about what matters. Pets. Did you know like 70% of Americans have at least one? And there's a lot more to think about than shedding, feeding, and if you have to walk it. So today we're going to meet some people who know the right questions to ask before you get a pet. So don't go away. Looking for a great way to keep your weekly shopping budget in check? Choose your favorite supermarket store brands and you will be amazed at the savings you'll see at the register. Made from the same quality ingredients as national brands, store brands really add up to great savings. Give them a try and add money to your pocketbook. Getting a new pet can be awesome, but you really need to know what you're getting yourself into. It's a big commitment. Dr. Amy Addis is a vet who makes house calls to some pretty awesome houses we hear, and you've been treating, what, over 10,000 four-legged friends in the last few years? In their own homes, yes. That's awesome. Steve Del Savio, you are now what we would call a pet behavioral specialist, but you started out as a dog walker years this ago. This is a dog walker, one dog it started with. And you've, you've also studied under uh, Caesar? Yes, Caesar the dog Milan, whisperer. Yep. The dog whisperer. Now I'd say him. you're a dog whisperer, too. I try to be. And Shirley Parcon, whose household consists of, I'm going to let you tell him. Nine hens, mm -hmm. six rabbits, five ducks, three dogs, two cats, and one fish. And you had to pause there because they change, I'm sure, every they, once in a while. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to that in just a second. But Amy, I want to start with you. People come to you after they get a pet normally, but you say they should come before. Could you tell us why? So the first thing you want to do is figure out what you want. Do you want a dog or a cat? And if you want a dog, you want to figure out what kind of dog. You know, dogs are not just one thing. There are high energy dogs. There are dogs that need a lot of grooming, dogs that need a lot of training. Think about how much time you have to spend doing all of this and get the type of dog that's most appropriate for your lifestyle. And you were also saying when we talked before about t the timing of a dog, because I was saying that I, I know people who, when they have parrots, they, a parrots last for 80 to 100 years, and they will them to other members of the family. But you were saying the same thing comes with dogs and cats. Absolutely. You know, you're about to have a family member for the next 10 or maybe 20 years. And so perhaps it's not the right thing if you're in your 70s or older to think about getting a puppy. You want to get an age-appropriate, energy-appropriate animal for your lifestyle. Steve's, Steve's sitting there nodding his head. I'm sure you've seen a lot of different types of dogs. Could you tell our audience what you do? Basically what I do is I re rehabilitate dogs and train people. I work with the dog whisperer. So. Slow down. You sure. Rehabil hold yeah. Rehabilitate dogs <laughs> and, train, and people. train people. It's really about the education of people. I mean, the dogs to me have become the easy part. It's, it's, it's the education of understanding dog psychology. So most people are focused on treating a dog as a human. So we're humans, we're gonna use human psychology, so we rationalize and we say, why is my dog doing this behavior? Why is he doing this? But they're doing it as a dog. So if we understand dog psychology, we understand where they're coming from, what their energy is, what are their needs, then it makes it easier, easy for us to work with them and then assess ourselves. Because our energy is the most important thing. Now, you actually, uh, Amy, you actually go into people's homes. You are a vet that makes house calls. So are you doing the same thing? Are you, like, looking around and seeing how the people are living? So I think it's two things. The first is I get to see the animals in their own environment, so their behavior is more normal, whereas if you see an animal in an animal hospital, they're so nervous that you're not seeing the actual dog or cat itself. And then when I'm in the environment, I see things that are potential hazards that I would never think to ask people about. So let me give you some for instances. On a beautiful spring day, maybe people go and open their windows all the way without realizing that that's a danger for their dog or their cat who might be interested in smelling the outside and could fall out the window. Or around the holidays when people get flowers, lilies are the most dangerous thing that cats can come in contact with. Every part of the Wait lily... Minute. lilies are lilies. poisonous? Lilies are poisonous to cats. The petals, the stems, the stamens, the, the roots, every part of that plant, if eaten by a cat, Poisonous. Sitting here with my mouth wide open, I had no Nobody idea about this. this. <laughs> so I go into people's homes who have cats, and sometimes my clients aren't home. They allow their doormen sure. to let me in or whatever, and there'll be a beautiful bouquet of lilies, which I will promptly throw in the garbage <laughs> because they don't know, and that's how dangerous they are. Shirley, are, are, are you hearing this? <laughs> I am hearing this. We have the lilies in the house. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's, that's pretty amazing. Now, Steve, let me come back to you really quickly. You were talking about training. Yeah. But 
you have a three-pronged approach for training the dog. Yeah, that correct? It's, it's basically a foundation of what I, as humans, we complicate everything, so we're really good at overthinking all this stuff, but every dog that I see, I really come back to a formula of exercise, discipline, affection. Slow down. Yep. Exercise first, discipline, and then affection. In that order. In that order, which is very important, which is really body, mind, and soul. If right. you really think about it. So if we're fulfilling all those needs with a dog, the, the biggest thing that I see with owners is that they're not fulfilling the needs of a dog. So they're doing it for their own needs. They have their own emotional needs, but they're not fulfilling a dog's instinctual needs. So what I'm hearing you say then is people sometimes get pets for themselves, not for the dog. Of course. You get pets for, for the whole family. Am I correct? We do. We started with uh, a few eggs and hatch them with my kids when they were very young, third grade. Wow. And so they learned how, where chickens came from. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about what you have at home, who takes care of it, and we're also going to see the result of what happens when Steve takes a pack of dogs out. We'll be right back. Want to make your mealtime a little more enjoyable? Check out the ready to heat, ready to serve meals and side dishes offered at your favorite supermarket. Whether it's chilled, or fresh or frozen, you can taste the cuisines of the world. And if you buy the supermarket store brands, you can be sure of quality and freshness at reasonable prices. Give them a try and add something special to mealtime. Welcome back. For those of you just joining us, we're talking about how much your life changes when you bring home a pet. And Dr. Amy, you were talking about actually going into people's homes because you are a vet and you make house calls. Steve, you are the leader of the pack. Yes. And Shirley, you have a bunch of pets at home, all to take care of with your family. Before we go on, however, Steve, you your three-pronged approach is? Exercise, discipline, and then affection in that order. Let me show. Let us show you really quickly a shot of what happens when Steve takes a pack. Now, how many packs, how many dogs are usually in a pack? It can be, I mean, listen, to me, a pack is like a family, so it can be anything from two, a human and one dog to a human and 30, 50 dogs, So this looks dogs. like an Irish Catholic pack that yeah, we're exactly. looking at right exactly. now, going out there must be 15 exactly. or 20 dogs. Yeah. And the thing is, you can watch this video for eight, 10 minutes. I think it goes on for yes. about eight or 10 minutes, and none of them yes. leave the pack. But the goal is to get all dogs into a following state of mind, so a calm follower state. Most dogs that you'll see on the street are usually leading in front, they're pulling, they're making decisions to smell other things, and you can see very obviously that they're leading the pack. So for me, when I'm with all my dogs, you'll see in that video too, there's a dog who's kind of in front of a little chihuahua that I just stop with our dogs, we relax, and we let them kind of move out of the way, and then we continue on our path. How long does it take to do this with an animal? It's, it's really, I, so I work with them individually first before right. I just put them all together, but it's, it's, again, to me, the belief with dogs is energy first. So you can have whatever breeds there, and breeds are more of tendencies, what are their generalities, what are they gonna do, but it's energy first. So once we can get them all into that state and they understand that I'm gonna lead in a calm, confident way, and the dogs will be in a calm follower state, they're just, I'm tapping into their DNA of wanting a leader. So I just literally do what they are asking me to do and do it for them. That's fantastic. And they feel very happy doing it. Now, Shirley, you, ha you said you have how many dogs at home? Three dogs. Three dogs. So would those dogs be in that pack or did you train them differently? They should be in that pack because <laughs> they should be. Wait a minute, before we go on, I really want to show, I want, let's take a look at the pictures. This is Shirley's backyard. It's and the interesting thing about this is with all of the animals that you have, you live in an urban environment. We do. So how big would you say the environment is for the animals? For the animals, it's about a 25 by 30 area. And that's that for the ducks in. and the chickens? Ducks, chickens, rabbits. Rabbit. Oh, sorry. I <laughs> didn't mean to forget the rabbit. <laughs> and for inside, we have? Three dogs, two cats, and the fish. And who takes care of all these? It takes a village. <laughs> it does. Uh, my, my children, my, my partner takes care of them early in the morning, and then I'll go out and feed them. And when my children are with me, they'll feed them as well, water them, and put them in at night. What happens when you need a vet? Because I'm, I'm hearing 15 or 20 times a year you might need a vet. You're right. My, my pets, my dogs and my cats go to a regular vet. The outdoor animals live the circle of life. Circle of life. Yes. Circle of life for yeah. the outdoor <laughs> animals. But with that, you also have fresh eggs all the time. We do every day. And the kids are learning responsibility. Yes. And what do you think the biggest lesson is that they're learning from having the, this entire group of, of Shirley's Ark at home? What is the biggest lesson that they've learned is, yes, responsibility and caring. 
And are, and are they caring children? They're very caring children. Then your job is probably done. Could you each leave us with one last thought for our audience that you'd like them to take away from, from this show about pets? I think your life is so enhanced by a pet. And for people who say to me that they can't possibly get a pet because they work all the time, there are doggy daycares that can help you. There are dog walking teams that can help you. As Shirley said, it does take a village, but you can get that and you can have a wonderful life with a pet and provide a great home for them. Shirley? I totally agree with that. <laughs> I totally well, agree good. with and that. Now, yeah, no, uh, yeah. I totally agree with that. Um, one thing to take away is, is it's a big responsibility to have a pet and just be ready for that. But it does teach you a lot of things about how to communicate, how to um, introduce life, you know, death to life birth and to death, death yeah. to to the children, and it's a it's a growing experience. Perfect. Thank you. And I'm going to give you the last word here, here's okay. leader of the pack. That's right. I would say that the, the, the most important thing to me is energy is everything and compatibility when getting a dog. So just as she was saying of, of you know, a senior getting a puppy is might not be the best compatibility. So I would be looking for a dog for energy first, then when then breed, because rescues are going to be mixed breeds and things like that. But I would always focus on the energy. So what is a dog's energy meaning? Are they a pushy dog is one side of it. Is it a softer dog? That's one type of energy. The other is how much energy do they have that needs to be spent in a day. So if you're a highly active person, you can look for a highly active yeah. dog. If you're more low key, you can find more of the couch potato dog. So to me, like dogs are really the teachers. I, I'm really learning from them and then teaching people what I've learned from them because they keep life simple. They're about energy. They don't know how to lie. It's just, to me, animals are a gift to us and we have to start listening to them instead of blaming them and saying that they're wrong. I love that. A like gift to it, it, I, I agree with you. Or yeah. They are. And, and, and full disclosure, I had a conversation with Amy when we were doing the pre-interview, and my mother-in-law had a cat that was on the edge of not being around anymore. And Amy gave me a couple little things to tell my mother-in-law, and I just was grooming the cat the other day. There so you go. That's news. It's, it's amazing. It, it, you just never know. And it was really a gift to be able to see that that cat had gotten a lot healthier. And even though I don't even have a goldfish, I know that um, this has been an incredible educational uh, opportunity for all of us. Thank you so much, everyone. And I just wanted to thank all of you for joining us at home. And for more information on what you've seen on today's show, please visit Store Brands USA, the channel here on YouTube, or go to storebrandsusa.com for shopping, information, recipe ideas, and more. I'm Jody Daly, and I'll see you next time on another edition of Let's Talk. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.